good morning happy friday and thank you for, um azure power lunch uh webinar and today we're going to talk about uh, azure ad domain services so i'm going to be sharing my screen So today we are, uh, normally we go through some updates. So probably I will go through updates next week. Um, you know, have some combined updates next week. This week, uh, I'm gonna talk about Azure AD domain services, which is our discussion. It is not a new feature. It has been there for a while, but there are a few things that, uh, I mean, there are some updates that have been made uh, <clears throat> which I think worth discussing, and that's why I uh, definitely want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, talk about this. And by the way, any, uh, if you don't mind, if uh, you are uh, kind of not asking a question, if you can mute yourself, that would be great. So uh, let's start with a quick intro. This is a quick intro about myself. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, this is a blurb about myself. So I'm a CSA role in um, um, South Central District. So first of all, we're gonna basically focus on these three things. Azure AD domain services, what's new, how we can use it. And we will go through some presentation just to set the context. And then we have, um, um, then I have a quick demo that we can go over how to set it up and all that. So what is Azure AD Domain Services? Um, so first of all, let's be very clear that uh, AD is clearly differentiated. AD server is Microsoft on-prem uh, product that provides um, what we call Active Directory. Azure AD is something that is identity in the cloud. They are not the same thing. Uh, one is a server product. Azure AD is mostly for cloud application. So when we are um, kind of migrating applications from on-prem into the cloud, a number of uh, things we have to consider, of course, uh, including we are moving um, and there's infrastructure requirements and things that identity becomes a key issue. That's where, um, uh, I mean, that's where we have to look at how we fulfill identity requirements of the application. Is it possible to rewrite the application to use modern identity authentication or, we, I mean, or we don't have uh, the capacity or, I mean, you know, to use uh, the new ones and we have to go with uh, the existing authentication. OK, so, and let's say that we come across the scenario and there are a number of application which application you I'm sure you have seen where we cannot do just uh, hey, uh, let's modify it to use the modern authentication and um, use it uh, in the cloud. So that's where we come across these two very common solution and they are there's nothing wrong with it. These are the solution, but they have their pros and cons. One, you set up um, uh, connectivity to on-prem through VPN, um, site site VPN or express route and authenticate against your on-prem AD. So those application which was running on-prem using AD as your authentication store, you don't have to change anything. You just take it into the cloud and they start using um, AD uh, in the cloud. OK, so that's that's one way of doing it. Second thing is, uh, let's say that's not a possibility. I mean, you don't want to uh, come down for the application and you're worried that if something happens to your network connectivity, your application may not be functional. What you do is you move some domain controllers in Azure and that's how you provide the uh, authentic uh, identity. So, uh, but uh, each action has its pros and cons. The second one, uh, the challenge that you come across is 
let's say that uh, now you have to you know take care of those vms those vms they're running ad uh, in azure basically you're running ad in azure is vms and that's where you have to make sure they're up and running you have to secure them and all that so now you have another uh, thing to deal with so to address this uh, this is uh, azure ad domain services is a managed solution which kind of makes it simple to have uh, your ad in the cloud basically it seems like you have a you know have your cake and eat it too kind of situation where you can have a managed solution which is uh, very well protected in a sense that it kind of uh, all the um, you know uh, kind of it's very well secured and at the same time you don't have to maintain it like you know you know and all that and don't really make any subs or anything it's highly available you only pay for the cost and uh, you just run that solution in the cloud so that's all uh, there is to it in that scenario so what happens is when you um, so that's that's what azure ad domain services is basically you spin that up the solution in um, in uh, one of your virtual networks and that's how this managed ad service is available in the cloud uh, and uh, and then you can domain join vms and enable ldap or LDAPS to do LDAP authentication. So all of the things that you expect an on-prem directory to do, on-prem AD servers to do, a number of things that you have on-prem AD servers to do, you can do it with Azure AD domain services. And by the way, we will take a look at a few of the things which you can or cannot do uh, with one versus the other. So there are still differences. In some cases, you still may want to go with a um, Windows a server based um, AD in an Azure VM, but in most of the scenario, this thing should work and it, and it should be able to uh, meet your demands. OK, by the way, any questions? OK, uh, so yeah, I have a question, please. Is uh, the Azure AD domain services, is it a separate forest from the on-prem AD? No, it's the same one. Same forest. And what goes on behind the scenes? Is there a couple IaaS VMs spun up that yes. Microsoft manages? Exactly. And you can actually, and we will take a look at it, and you actually see the IP addresses or those, uh, wait, you know, you get two IP addresses. So, uh, you know, uh, so you can add it to your uh, DNS, all that. So, yes. And you spin it up in a VNet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pivot to the demo, and then we will come back to the um, slide if uh, everything is uh, everybody is okay with it, because I think seeing is believing. So let's um, let's do this. Let's do create a resource, and I'm going to type in domain services. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. This is the subscription. I'm gonna change the subscription. Let me just go. Um, hold on a second. Uh, let's let's go in here. All services. Yeah, so already um, exists. So this is Azure AD domain services I have created. Let me um, yeah, I want to show a demo how the the creation experience. But um, let's take a look at um, uh, 
one second. That's fine. Let's take a look at uh, this directory. So basically, I've already provisioned Azure AD domain services. For provisioning, I just want to explain you need a virtual network. You need a subnet where you will provision it. The third thing you need is uh, that Active Directory has to be attached to your subscription, of course, that, that you will need. And once you do that, it will, um, you know, it will uh, provision that. And by the way, it takes a couple of hours to fully provision this thing. Okay. Uh, and you can do it for, for Azure AD that is connected, uh, synced from on-prem, or you can do it with a standalone Azure AD. So for that, you don't need an AD that is living on-prem. Let's say you have a tenant that is cloud only, okay? And you want to this, you can provision it for certain application which still need those classic authentication method there. There are machines that need to domain join. There are uh, uh, apps that may need LDAP based directory access. OK, so for that, um, you know, you can still do that. So just want to show you the properties. So this is basically, um, you know, it puts an NSG. So these are the two. I think in, uh, somebody asked that question that uh, these are the two IP addresses that you get which you need to add to your uh, DNS. So, you know, location and all that, you know, traffic routing will work. Hey, Navita, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, maybe you'll get to talk to this, but are there any scenarios uh, where you could have both a combination of Azure AD domain services and Windows Active Directory? Uh, like I see some, some customers wanting to do an easy secure LDAP, um, and and not have to worry about uh, you know load balancers and all of that. So there are there scenarios like that where you can just deploy both environments. Theoretically, you can. So the the thing is, it is tied to a VNet. Okay, it's one strength and one weakness. So it is so once created, it will exist in that particular VNet. You can do VNet peering, and then DNS, and then you have let's say. You have another VNet where you have a VM that need to authenticate against this AD domains, Azure AD domain services. You can do VNet peering and it can uh, authenticate to that. There may be another VNet where there are some VM running which are using AD, you know, AD in a VM, either from on-prem or in the in an Azure IaaS VM. So yes, but you cannot have it as far as I know. You cannot have it in a single VNet. So you can have one VM which is authenticating against Azure AD domain services and another VM which is uh, in the same VNet, as far as I know. Okay. And one other um, challenge I see uh, that it's, uh, I mean, uh, the geo replication. So let's say if you have different regions that you want to do it. Uh, yes, you can do VNet peering between those VNets and do it, but still, I mean, do high availability and all if that region is down, then if you are relying on Azure AD domain services in that particular region, then, uh, you know, you will have trouble. I hope I answer your question. Yes, thank you. Okay. So this is basically this is the IP address. Um, that's the IP address uh, on the the two servers that you get, and you can, uh, you know, uh, use those in your DNS. And then this is the secure LDAP. So if you wanna enable app, and uh, of course LDAP pass, you have to turn it on and just keep in mind and they have put it everywhere. There are certain steps that are needed to enable this uh, thing to work. Of course, you have to provide a certificate, you know, turn it on. It will take some time to sync. 
and then you have to rehab uh, resync your on prem um if you are syncing from on prem ad because the password has to be stored in a certain way uh, and there are detailed guidelines how to do it uh, if you have accounts that are provisioned directly in azure ad they are not synced from on prem you will have to reset the password so it uh, so it resyncs so there that's that's some there are some of the things that you have to do to make sure that you can access those accounts from um uh, from uh, you know uh, through ldap so that that is uh, there are some and by the way they're very much detailed as you can see as soon as you come on this tab there are guidelines which are available um and then you have the synchronization and if you see here you can do all of but once you are done, you cannot change it. You know, um, you you will have to um, basically restart it or rebuild it. And by the way, uh, when I deployed it, uh, okay, let me just go into the properties. So this IP address, you have to point it to a virtual network. So I so there is a virtual network which is kind of currently hosting it and uh, you will see and there would be an NSG on top of it and uh, you, if you let's say you want to turn on um, LDAP S, so you have to open uh, you know uh, kind of ports in that NSG so you can um, you know manage those those settings so that that's some of the things that you have to do in order to um, you know make this thing work and uh, if you see here, I am not opening it so over the internet. So this is basically secure LDAP, and I am just um, you know enabling it um, just over you know into our local machine. So I have just to prove the point. I have this machine um, which is set up here. So this is in a uh, in a same VNet where this directory is deployed. And by the way, it has to be connected to this directory somehow. This LDAP application can be running somewhere else where the connection is made over, you know, where you can get to it, uh, you know, through VNet peer. And then you should be able to access LDAP. So for example, here, uh, I am just using this LDP.exe tool. I'm connecting to the directory. I have bind to the directory. And now I can query the tree. So, for example, these are all um, the users. So I can, you know, click on this user, a user which is, uh, um, you know, which is hosted inside Azure AD. So it is not a synced user. So this is their information. So all of it, uh, as you can see, I'm using it just like I can access any other LDAP directory um you know just and i don't have to manage any load balancers or any vms all is managed um by azure okay so let's go back to our slide deck and feel free to ask if you have any questions so this is basically as i said you have to have a virtual network and you have to have um you know azure AD domain services that will go into that uh, particular uh, network and said all a lot of tasks are being managed you know uh, for example um, you know it's fault tolerance i mean of course uh, since it's multiple vm so if one vm goes down you have the other vm behind the scene available you don't have to worry about virtual machine it's yes, the VMs are running behind the scene, but you don't have to worry about them. You don't have to upgrade them. You have to don't have to patch them. All of it is available through, um, you know, uh, through Azure. And if you are syncing an on-prem directory, it will be available in your Azure managed Azure AD tenant. So all of that is done behind the scene. All of that is once again taken care of by um 
by the by the underlying inf infrastructure. So you can easily bring your application into the cloud using the same identity uh, methodology that they were using on prem. If you, want, if you can't afford to, or you don't want to change them, or you can't afford to change them, all of it um, will be uh, supported. So this is kind of some of the feature. I just want to go over the cost perspective as well. So in terms of the cost, this is uh, it depends on how many directory objects are. Normally it's like 50 cents and 15 cents an hour. So with that, uh, you can, you know, um, you know, go up to a dollar sixty if you have a lot of objects uh, in that Azure AD domain um, services. These are some of the things that you have to think how you want to, let's say if you have VMs in Azure that need to do um, join, if you want to do a actual domain join, uh, then you have to use either AD in an Azure VM or Azure in services, while if you just do Azure AD join, there's a different protocol and all those things. And by the way, the slide deck will be available. Um, if you remember, if you people have, uh, some of your people have played with it, this before, there used to be a need where it has to be deployed into a classic VNet. No longer that is a requirement. Now you can deploy it into an, uh, you know, a resource manager VNet without an issue. Okay. Um, and this is the new ex uh, experience. Basically, you define the subnet where you are de um, deploying. I couldn't show it because I already have created the domain. It takes a long time to create it, so I already created it. Um, by the way, just keep in mind, you cannot do it if you are using Azure internal subscription because the new Azure internal subscription you are creating that is tied to, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft uh, AD. And by the way, this doesn't apply to our customer, please. This is only if you are a Microsoft employee and you are using a Microsoft internal subscription. So that's totally internal. Sorry, I I don't don't want to mention it. So uh, this basically uh, one thing. Um, yeah, so these are some of the things I know we are running short of time, so I'm just going to quickly go over that. Of course, if you are deploying virtual machines in Azure, they need to do a domain join that LDAP application. You have application that needs LDAP access, um, you know, lift and shift of SharePoint server, HD inside, remote desktop deployments, all of these uh, they use. Um, I mean, they can take advantage of Azure AD domain services and it's all available in the deck just for the sake of time. I go over um, one second. I want to go over this slide. And by the way, this is also yes. Only managed domains. So basically, um, as a managed service, I mean, there are a lot of advantages, but there are certain things you cannot do. And these are outlined here. One of the things was that you could not write LDAP, but now you can do LDAP writes, but only to the objects which were native to the AD. If there are any synced objects from on-prem, you cannot do LDAP write on it. Okay, so that's something um, to uh, keep in mind. And of course, look at the last one. You cannot do geo-dispersed deployment at this point. So uh, that's something that um, you know hope coming soon um, in the in the future. So, folks, that's all I have. Any questions, comments, feedback? I, I got a quick question. Is there a process to move this resource to another subscription? It's not supported to move, but a migration of some sort that you figured out. Yeah. I, I'm not aware of, I can find out. So that's a good question. So the thing is you want to move it to a different subscription, but of course you want to keep the, uh, your, uh, mm -hmm. ADs All your users and object uh, devices and everything there. That's all domain. 
basically yeah. like an ADMT, but you can't do a you can't do a trust, so you can't do something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, yeah, I'm not aware. I'm not sure if that is possible, but I can try to find out. Yeah, please, please. I mean, you have my email. Yeah. You should have my email address. So feel free to ping us or you know azurepowerlunch.com. Uh, you know that that alias or dot microsoft.com. So you can ping us on that. I will. We get back. We're a that. we're a CSP partner, so it, it it hits a lot of customers really bad when they try to move into CSP. So yeah. No, absolutely. I think that's a definitely something um, that is uh, worth paying attention. And uh, you know, if you can write me an email, I will try to see you know what I can find out. And hopefully, we have Thanks. something. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Is it the full feature set of group policy, like on-prem? Policy. Can it do all the same group policy as regular Windows Server 80? As far as I know, yes. OK, thank yeah. you. So I would suggest play around with it. Uh, you know, see, uh, you know, you can, since it's cloud, you don't have to make a commitment to it. You can just play around with it and just, if it doesn't work for you, you can, you know, remove it. So, but that's definitely, something to think about when you are looking at some of the scenario which we talked about like you know lift and shift of application particularly your application that are using at that okay. so um, folks thank you for joining and uh, hope to see everyone next week for another session of Azure Power Lunch and I hope everyone has a great uh, happy Friday and a great weekend so thank you